second, right? Okay, okay, so, no. <clears throat> so I gotta dump this out because okay. we're gonna pour a little more in it, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't. All right. It's okay. I'm not nervous. This is fun. Yeah, I like it. All right. Hey, well, <laughs> welcome to the continuing winemaker series here series here at Wine of the Month Club, and I'm very excited. And I get to, it's kind of like I get to introduce this winery to to America because I have Armenian heritage. My wife has Armenian heritage. My parents, my grandparents, and we have Victoria Aslanian from Armas Winery, which is it's got to be one of, if not the first, state of the art winery in, in Absolutely. Armenia. Absolutely, I mean, it's beautiful. It is. It's on a 450-acre estate. Everything is world-class, completely designed and built from foundation. Uh, everything by Italians from, from northern Italy. Oh, wow. Our winemaker is Italian. We have French oak barrels. We have Garabar oak barrels. Everything is done to be just have the absolute best wine that we can get from the We'll discuss the oak barrels in a second. I'm interested to hear that because okay. I just got back from a winery in, in Monterey and they're using all French and I want to talk to you about that. But this is Victoria and she has, and you'll see her English is excellent because she went to? Berkeley. Berkeley. Berserkly. And you studied what Art there? Art history. And Art history. And I wanted to also incorporate that in our wines. And so you see a little bit of Armenian history represented here. This is from 5th century BC. Miniature art. We have a lot of history, and we want to present it to the world, to the international market. We're well, very proud to do so. I don't think anybody really knows that Noah landed his ark on Arad, and it's in the Bible that he planted grapes there. We don't know what kind of grapes. Maybe some of these grapes. Um, but your father has a vision to do this and spend a lot of money to create. I mean, I don't care if it's Armenia or California. It's a lot of money to start a winery. You typically take a long time to get it back, but he had a vision to do what? Absolutely. He repatriated to Armenia uh, after living 20 years abroad, and he wants to revive the winemaking legacy that Armenia had, which has been lost through political, for political reasons, etc. But we have fantastic grapes, and so there's amazing potential there. It is. It is. Uh, they, well, the wines I've tasted before, folks, and they're very good. Um, but and the soil's great. The soil is amazing. We have very volcanic soil, so we get very good minerality in our wines, and all of our wines are native varieties. We really wanted to display those. I noticed that. And some of them are the oldest varieties in the world. In fact, there's biological evidence that shows that the wild grape and the cultivated grape, Vitis vinifera, originated particularly in that area. So it's not just really? biblical legacy. It's also biological fact and carbon-dated oldest winery in the world. Is in now that was recent. That was fairly recently. They found the most intact winery ever. Mm -hmm. It was uh, in 2009. They discovered it in. It's like 6,000 years old. 6,100 right. years old. And the guy that's left amazing. his shoes on the way out the door before right, they the closed. Right, the oldest it. shoe in the world <laughs> as well. That's right. But you know there are certainly there's uh, wines that are in King Tut's tomb, etc. But but this winery is look. They they found it basically intact in it's literally the shoes. It's amazing. That's it is amazing. Mm -hmm. So. We're going to taste through some of these wines that are that Victoria brought all the way from Armenia for us, and all kinds of fun things, just chocolate and, and what I really am intrigued by because the Armenian alphabet, um, Mesrop, Mesrop, Mashtot. Yeah, yeah, Mesrop yeah, invented the alphabet, and, and but there's a very unique um, art about the lettering, and this is what you put on the labels. Yeah, it's called Tarchnagi. And it basically, it uses uh, zoomorphic designs to form the letters. And so we have that on our logo. It's beautiful. And it's Armas. This is in Armenian. So it's A-R-M-A-S. Uh -oh. And it's my great-grandfather's name, who was the original winemaker in our family. And my father's name, and also my son's name. Wow. So he's, uh, he's going to be a winemaker, your son, now? He's only seven he or better. something. Or five. <laughs> he better. <Yes. laughs> so the first one we're pouring about this year, so we get a close-up of that. Is uh, I, folks, I studied Armenian a little, and my kids speak, and I, but I'm not, I'm working on French right now, so mm -hmm. explain the grape. Uh, this is an estate blend of Kangun and Rigatsteli. Rigatsteli is not a local variety, but it has been growing in the region for over a hundred years. Kangun is a local variety, and it shares uh, genealogy with Chardonnay, so you'll find some similar aromas. And it's got great acidity, folks, and really good body, and I can, you know. One thing for sure with wine, the affinity of wine and food in the regions it comes from, it, there's a reason why certain grapes grow well and foods evolve around the foods uh, as well as uh, the wines revolve around the food. So this, I, I love this wine. It's changed really in that you were here a few months ago and I, it's got more full bodied. The color's almost like a Pinot Grigio though. It's got that gray tone to it. What color is the grape? Is it a 
Does it have a color to the skin? No, uh, it's medium green. Mm. Mm -hmm. Kind of like my shirt. Well, I can see that with some shellfish and. Uh, yeah, the two whites that we have, I think this one goes well pretty much with most dishes, and it actually changes its character throughout the meal. Some of our other wines, for instance, the rosé, it is what it is, no matter what you. No, yeah, what, yeah, no matter how you strong. pour it or where you pour it with. Now, this is. Are these in America yet? Are they coming they to are. America? They are. The only one that we don't have here yet is the Voskehat because we had a very limited production in 2012. But this is going to be at the World Wine Symposium this year in Lake Como. And, the Voskehat. Uh, presented Voskihat. by Jose Volermos is one of the rare grape varieties in the world. Wow, and very it's cool. A great honor. So these are all Vitis Fenefica. Yes, the Carmelahut is a hybrid. Wow. So Vitis Venefra is the is basically the Latin term for the grapes that are made or have been or make wines that make uh, quality wines. You can't make wine from Concord grapes. You can, but it's not very good, and that's not a Vitis Venefra grape. So, um, so Voskihat. Voskihat Vos means how's my, how's golden my accent? berries. Perfect. <laughs> Voske means gold in Armenian. Uh, Voskihat means golden berries, and we call this the golden grape at our mm. estate. It's very difficult to grow thick bunches, susceptible to diseases if you're not very, very attentive, and so very few people have it. It's kind of like a spoiled child. Well, I have not seen other <laughs> white wines attention. from other places, actually, Armenian wines. The only wines I've ever tasted really from Armenia have been Adani, which we're going to taste in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what I'm finding very interesting about these wines, it, it, you can't compare them, right? You don't say this has Sauvignon Blanc character or Chardonnay character. Exactly. You, it, because of its indigenous character, it is what it is, and it's not trying to be anything else. Exactly, and, and that's you, what we want to display. It's great. It's really good. So you think that uh, it's here in America. You've got a, I know you have a distributor here. And it's, he's just starting to get them. You, your first container arrived already? It did. Wow. We're already in John's Market, Remedy Liquor, Mission, uh, online with Remedy Liquor. We're in a bunch of places, and now slowly also we're getting to the American market. So it's very, very exciting. Congratulations. That's really exciting stuff. I mean, it's a, this is not easy business, folks, to be bringing wines into America from particularly a country as obscure wine-wise as Armenia would be. But our you recommend maker, the, the rosé now? Absolutely. Okay. This is my personal favorite. It's unlike any other rosé because the grape variety, the juice inside is red, and that's why we have this very, very ruby color despite it having no skin contact during fermentation. Okay, that's a very important point mm -hmm. because almost every other grape, there's only a handful that I know of that when you peel them, no matter whether they're red inside or white, uh, red outside or white outside, the pulp is always clear. But this grape, the pulp is red. Mm -hmm. Garmid means red in Armenian, yep. hute juice. So, garmida hute, red juice. That's, That's where it amazing. gets. That's amazing. Yeah. What a great nose. This one won um, two awards at Decanter, World Wine Awards in London, uh, bronze, and also a silver in Lithuanian International Wine Awards. So, with our very first vintages, we already have five international awards. Three of them That's from Decanter, good. which is, you know, as most know, it's the most prestigious, largest recognized wine competition. So we're very, very happy to bring that recognition to our country. And where do they, what class do they put this in? They put in the Premium. rosés? Yeah, uh, rosé glass. Rosé glass. Rose glass. Yeah. Wow. So it's up against the, the French, it's up against all the, everything. Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty good. It certainly has, uh, and I can, not that I necessarily sense the fact that it's got red pulp, but it certainly has a lot of body for a rosé. Typically, rosés are, are blends of reds and whites, so here's a, here's a rosé actually made from the pressing of, of a red grape. And lots of berries you can see. Mm -hmm. Rose petals. We have actually a lot of, uh, we have 40 hectares of orchards, so some of those aromas are also transferred to the wines because they grow in the immediate vicinity. Oh, wow. It's, 40 hectares is about, uh, what, 100 acres, 88 acres? Yep. Yeah. Approximately. Mm, excellent. This is really good. So this this one's here. Mm -hmm. We can go to the store and buy this at John's Market. All of these are. I hope these aren't. Just, the I hope they're not just stuck in the section, the wine section no. of the market. There's some place specific for them. Uh, you you depends on the store, but I'm sure if you ask, they'll direct you. That's it for the whites and the rosés. I'll be right back with the reds.